Family Theater presents Audrey Totter, Jeffrey Lynn, and Lyle Betger. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Wherever You Go, starring Audrey Totter and Lyle Becker. To introduce the drama, here is your host, Jeffrey Lynn. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. Tonight, Family Theater takes great pleasure in presenting Wherever You Go, starring Audrey Totter as Ruthie, and Lyle Betker as Joe. There is a tenderness, and there is a beauty to life, and there is a glow and a shine to people, if one will only look for it. He had a little newsstand on the corner of 49th Street and Broadway, and she worked across the street at Bond's orange juice counter. And every night at seven, she would walk past the newsstand on her way to the subway. And every night at seven, he would look up from his papers and watch her till she disappeared down the steps. And though each was well aware of the other, neither said a word, and this went on for two years. Then, one afternoon, one of the fellows who hung around the neighborhood decided to do something about it. So he went across the street and ordered an orange juice. And he said to her, Keeping you busy, Ruthie? Well, not so much, Charlie. It's a bit cold. Yeah, it is. Looks like old man Fall is breezing into town. Mm. I guess you'll be going south. Right. First snip of cold weather, I hit for the sunny places. Wish I could leave a life like that. Yeah, it's a shame you can't. Now, look at Joe across the street. Now, he's... What about him? Don't you know? He's coming along with me this time. He's gonna close up his stand. What? Sure, I'm getting him a job at one of those racetracks down south. Oh, he'll make himself a lot of solid dough. Oh, well, when is he leaving? Tomorrow morning. So soon? Yep, the Scarface is leaving these parts tomorrow morning. You mean Joseph Moran? Oh, I'm sorry, Ruthie. Yeah, I mean Joseph Moran. It's not right to call him a Scarface. He's, well, he's good-looking. His face hasn't any really bad scars. Sure, 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 Ruthie. Well, be seeing you in the spring. Goodbye, Charlie. Bye, Ruthie. Oh, Tommy. Yeah? Could you watch my side for a minute? I, uh, I have to go across the street. Sure thing. Here's your paper, mister. Times. What's yours, man? Oh, it's you. Hello. Hello. I, um, I, I work across the street at Bonds. Y yeah. How are you? Fine. It's, 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 it's a nice night, isn't it? Uh-huh. Nice. Hey, don't you want to get paid for your papers? Here, I took a Times and a News. What? Papers? Yeah, papers. Ah, get out of here. Can't you see I'm talking to somebody? Come on, take the papers and beat it. What? I said beat it. Okay, okay. That's money in my pocket. Guy has no manners. Yeah. It, it, it's a nice night, isn't it? Uh-huh. And... Uh, Mr. Moran, I wish you have a nice trip and that you make a lot of money and that you don't get mixed up in a bad crowd. Goodbye. What? Hey, uh, wait, wait a minute. No, wait. Holy smokes. Hey, Murph. Murph. What do you want, Joe? Come on over here, will you? I'm on traffic duty here. I got eyes. Come on over. Well, what is it? Quick. Keep your eyes on the papers, Murph. I got to go across the street. What? I'll be back in a whisker. Now, wait a second. I said I'll be back, didn't I? Can't you watch the stand for me? But I'm on over there, Joe. Can't the cars take care of themselves for two minutes? 
What do you think they do when you're not there? Stop and wait till you come back? But I... Watch the papers. And remember, at times it's five cents and news is three cents. Think you can assimilate that? Now look, Joe. And any time a quarter looks phony, bite it. I'll be back. Joe! 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 <clears throat> Orange juice. Oh, it's you. That's me. Uh, thanks for the nice sentiment, but uh, I'm not going on any trip. What? Stand right here on the green pastures of Broadway. Oh, but I thought... Ah, that... somebody's been giving you a line of moon dust. Oh, I'm... I'm so embarrassed. And as far as I'm concerned, I'd like to pin a medal on the guy who told you I was leaving. You would? Yeah. I've been wanting to speak to you for two years. You have? Sure, but I... Well, I, I figured you'd nix a guy with my kind of face. Your kind of face? Mr. Moran, you must never say a thing like that again. Oh, I, I know how I rate with mirrors. Mr. Moran, Okay, I... okay. <laughs> I'm beautiful. That's better. Well, uh, I guess introductions are in order. You know, when a fellow meets a girl, I'm Joe Moran. And I'm Ruthie Walton. And I limp. Why did you say that? I just wanted you always to remember it. In case you were thinking of... of getting to like me. Miss Walton, I watched you walk a million times. I never saw you limp. It's so good of you to say that. Cross my heart, never did. Thank you. Hey, how about me taking you out some night? Oh, I'd be delighted. Saturday night? That's all right with you. I hope it is, if it isn't some other night. Saturday night's okay with me. I'm very thrilled at the prospect of your company, Mr. Moran. And I am at yours, Miss Walton. Well, till Saturday night, then. Yes, till Saturday night. Had a nice time, Miss Walton? Oh, a very good time, Mr. Moran. You don't have to go up yet, I hope. It's nice sitting here on the stoop. I don't have to go up yet. Good, because I... I have something I'd have to ask you. You... you have? Miss Walton, I'd like to ask you to... Uh, you had a nice time? <laughs> yes, but I... Uh, huh? I don't think you should have spent all that money. Oh, what's ten bucks? We had a nice meal, didn't we? And we saw a swell movie, didn't we? What's ten bucks? Mr. Moran, ten dollars is all you make from a day's hard work. So what? Oh, you're starting to talk like a wife already. Oh. I, I'm sorry if I spoke like a wife. I didn't mean to. I... Well, Ruthie, I... Yes? Ruthie, I... Well, I guess I'd better be moving along. Didn't you want to say something? Yes, I... No, I'll be going. But... Good night, Joe. Good night. Oh, Ruthie. Yes? Gosh, the owl makes a lot of noise. How do you sleep with that racket? I manage. Well, I... I guess I'd better be going. I guess so. Ruthie? Ruthie, I make $65 a week. Well, I guess I'm not making much sense. You're not? Ruthie, would you like to share it with me? Would you like to be my wife? Joe. Oh, what's the matter? Did I speak out of line? Joe. Joe, don't you know how to propose to a girl? Ruthie, don't you I... know you're supposed to tell her that she's beautiful even if she isn't and, and, well, that you love her? Ruthie, listen to me. You are beautiful. I've seen them all walk down Broadway. Actresses, models, movie queens, and they're nothing against you. You're a star, Ruthie. You shine them all down. And I love you. I love you with all my heart. Joe, darling. Ruthie. <laughs> what is it, Joe? I was just thinking. Who's this guy, Robert Taylor? <laughs> Murph, I need your advice. Only married six months and already he needs advice, eh? No, I'm serious. What's the trouble, Joe? It's Ruthie's ring. What do you mean, it's Ruthie's ring? She hasn't got one. Now, wait a minute. I, I borrowed one for the wedding. Had to give it right back after the ceremony. 
Uh. And Ruthie hasn't got a ring, and it's been bothering me. Ah, uh, I get it. She never said anything about it, be well, because that's how she is. But last night, I happened to see her look at her hand. She didn't know I was watching her, and, well, she looked kind of sad, Murph. And now you want to get her a ring? Yeah. And you need my advice on what? Well, you see, Murph, if I get her a ring, I want to get her the best. Something about 60 bucks or so. Oh, what's stopping you? If I spend 60 bucks, Ruthie will make me take it back. She's, she's economical. And you want my advice on how to keep her from knowing, is that it? Yeah. I figured you can help me out on this problem. You passed the police test 15 years ago, but I guess you must have some brains left. <laughs> Thanks for the compliment. And now I'll tell you what to do. Yeah, I'm listening. Tell the little woman you only paid $30 for the ring, and the other 30 you lost on a horse. Are you nuts? You know how Ruthie feels about horse racing. Well, then tell her you lent it to me. I had to make a payment on my car, and I was short. Murph, you have the brains of a cow. And what happens when time passes, as it will, and the money is not forthcoming? Hey, where do you get those big words from, anyway, forthcoming? Listen, you just go ahead and buy the ring and tell her the truth. Oh, yeah. I guess the truth is the best course to follow. Best course to... The guy's going Park Avenue on us. Big words, no more cap and sweater. Clean shade every day, a clean shave. Mr. Park Avenue himself. Hello, honey. I'm home. Hello, Joe. Did you have a good day? I sure did. Hey, got something for you. For me? Well, what is it? Open it. Here. It's such a tiny package. Joe! Like it? It takes my eyes out, Joe. It, it sparkles like a star. I oh, just happened to pick it up. Must have cost you a fortune. Uh, just a few bucks. How much, Joe? Well, uh... uh Joe? $62. What? Now, don't say I should take it back because the sale was final. The fellow dropped dead the minute he sold it to me. Final. But... The store was dynamited just as I left it. Final. <laughs> All right, darling. But, but no more extravagances, please. Oh, gosh, that's a load off my chest. Oh, it's so beautiful. I'm afraid to look at it. I'll keep it forever, Joe. <laughs> forever. Now, look, now, don't start turning on the tears, will you? All right. Oh, but Joe, it's like fire. It's like white fire. Oh, how jealous everything is go everybody's going to be of me. I'm going to show it to Mrs. Jansen downstairs right away. Oh, her eyes will pop. <laughs> I'll be right back, darling. Go ahead, Ruthie. Have a good time with it. Mrs. Jansen! Mrs. Jansen, look what I... Ruthie! 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 I fell down the stairs. My leg. Easy, kid, easy. Well, what are you all looking at? Get a doctor. How is she, doctor? Leg is fractured, but otherwise nothing serious. You sure? Yes. And tell me, how did it happen? Oh, she must have tripped going down the stairs. She limps, you know. I'd uh, like to speak to you about that, Mr. Moran. Yes. Your wife's leg is deformed from the ankle down. That's right. Now, up to a few years ago, there was nothing that could be done about it. Then an orthopedic man in Vienna began to experiment with this kind of deformity. Yeah? He was unsuccessful. Oh, well, then uh, why do you... But an American doctor, Lester Field, read of these experiments and decided to try his hand at it. Now, his methods turned out to be the correct ones. You... You mean that Ruthie... Should be able to walk normally. I'm surprised that you didn't know about this. Well, Doctor, we... You see, I sell all the newspapers and magazines, but I, I never read them much. Never went to school much either. Had to bat out a living from the time I was a kid. I understand. And I guess if Ruthie knew about it, she never had the dough to go ahead with it anyway. It is rather expensive, considering the time lost, if one were working. But Ruthie doesn't have to worry about time lost now, Doctor. I managed to scrape out enough for both of us. And there's no reason why you shouldn't go ahead with the operation. About 500... 500? Haven't you anything saved up? Doc, we... We just furnished this apartment. I, I, I know it's not like the Roxy lobby, uh, but... I, I understand. Besides, if I know Ruthie, she'll never let me spend $500 on her, even if it meant her life. Well, I hope you'll be able to see your way clear. Just make sure that she lies quietly. I'll drop around again. Good day. 
Thanks, Doctor. Joe? Coming, Ruthie. How do you feel, honey? All right. I suppose I gave you a scare. Oh, you sure did. What were you and the doctor talking about? Oh, nothing. Just a bit of weather talk. He say when I'd be able to get out of bed? In a little while. And then we'll prop you up in a chair, like a queen. Cushions and all, eh, Joe? Uh-huh. Oh, it's a shame this had to happen now. The weather's getting so fine lately. Mm, it's the first of spring, Ruthie. My, how months go by. Spring already. Why, it seems like yesterday that I was talking to Charlie and... Charlie, he... that's it. What, Joe? He must be back in town already. Ruthie, I'm, I'm going out for a minute. I'll be right back. Don't you think I'm a good risk, Charlie? Joe, I know you're as honest as they come, but... But what? Charlie, what's holding you back? Why won't you lend me the 500? You had a good season with the horses, didn't you? Yeah, Joe, I did. Well? I mm, guess I'll have to give it to you straight, then. What are you driving at? You won't like what I'm going to say, Joe. Say it. Look, fella, did you ever stop to think how pretty Ruthie is? That's all I ever do think of. Well... Joe, it's this. As long as Ruthie stays as she is, the two of you are a perfect match. Happy. You're equals. She's got a leg that's all out of kilter, and you with the... with a face that's gone through a bombing and Lord knows what else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. Well, straighten her out, and why should she be tied to a fella like you? Oh, I know Ruthie. She'll stick to you because that's how she's built. But it won't be fair to her because... All she'd have to do then is just smile and she'd have a street full of fellas with money and looks buzzing around. Yeah, I see what you mean. Sorry I had to deal it to you this way, Joe. It's okay, I, I understand. Still want the money? Yes, Charlie. Joe, surely the doctor would want some money for the operation? No, no, Ruthie, honey, look. He's fixing it up with some charities or some organization that foots the bills. You're not lying to me, Joe. Now, that's not a nice thing to say, Ruthie. Did I ever lie to you before? No, Joe. And I'm sorry I said it. <laughs> gee, gee, soon I'll be doing everything I, I couldn't do, won't I, darling? You bet. And we'll do it together, Joe. We'll go dancing, hiking, and... What's wrong, Joe? What? Well, you looked at me funny. Funny? You know what I mean. Your eyes seem to, well, to turn sad. Oh, uh, well, uh, it's nothing, Ruthie, nothing. Then she's leaving the hospital tomorrow, doctor? Yes, the operation was a complete success. Your wife will be able to dance in no time. Oh, that's great. I want to thank you for letting her think it was all done on the cuff. Well, that's all right. I only wish I had been able to arrange it so there'd have been no expense at all. You've done more than enough, Doc. Can I go in and see her now? <laughs> of course. Go right ahead. Thanks, Doc. Hello, Ruthie. Joe? Brought you some flowers. Joe... There you go, spending your money like water. But I picked them in the park, honest. Fibber. All right, so I bought them in a store. They're beautiful. Yeah, they are kind of pretty, aren't they? Just like you. Darling Joe. You're not looking so well. What? Oh, I'm okay, Ruthie. You eat regular? You don't work too hard at the stand, and you go right home when you're done, or, or do you stay around and talk all hours with the boys? I eat regular, and I don't work too hard, and I go right home when I'm done. Well, still, you don't look so good, Joe. I'm okay, Ruthie. Now, just stop worrying about me. <laughs> well, tomorrow I'll be out of here, and then I'll be able to take good care of you. Yes, Ruthie. Tomorrow you'll be out of here, and you'll walk straight and smooth. And we'll go dancing, Joe, at the Paradise Ballroom. I've always wanted to go there. You'll go dancing at the Paradise Ballroom. That's a date now. Yes, Ruthie. It's a date.
did you just say? I said I sold the stand, Murph. Now, will you oh, please... Oh, why? You were making out all right, Joe. Will you stop asking questions and do me this favor? Yeah, but... You going to or not? What is it? All right. Now, give this to Charlie. And there's some money left over for Ruthie. Say, have you lost your brain? And give her this message. Tell her I got tired of this town. Sick of peddling papers and getting nowhere. I'm, I'm fed up with being tied down. I want to get out on my own. Play the tracks. Get some real dough for myself. Joe! Tell her I, I, I only waited around till I was sure she'd be all right. Now... Now, she's getting out of the hospital today. She'll be able to get a better bargain than me in no time. Joe, wait a minute. Maybe she'll be hurt for a little while, but she'll get over it. She'll forget me. So long, Murph. Joe! So long. But Murph, That's I... what he said, Ruthie. But why should Joe... No, I won't believe it. The guy must have gone off as nut. Murph, I, I've got to speak to him. Well, he's a good ways out of town by now, Ruthie. Johnny Bryan saw him get on the Chicago train. I must see him. I've got to. Murph, I'm going after him. I'll find him no matter how long it takes. You I'll... sure love the guy, don't you, Ruthie? More than anything in the whole world. Yeah. Oh, Murph, what am I going to do? Now, now, don't you worry, honey. I'll get him back for you. You don't have to go looking all over for him, neither. You... I'll get him back for you, Ruthie, even if I have to pin a rap on him. You Joe Moran? What? What do you want? Yeah, you're Moran, all right. Description tallies. What do you mean, description tallies? What are you talking about? A slight case of murder, fella. What? Now listen, guy, I'm in no mood for jokes. I got misery enough. Blow, will you? You're talking to the police, Moran. I'm New York City headquarters. Now wait a second. A guy's got a right to know what the rap is, doesn't he? I told you it was murder. You sold your newsstand to Ed Cobb, didn't you? Sure I did. What's wrong in that? You had a lot of greenbacks on him when he paid you off, didn't he? Sure he did. So what? So nothing. Nothing except Cobb was found with his skull bashed in and his pockets empty. What? And you were the last guy to see him alive. Now, listen here. I'm Isn't not going to... It's funny that you should see Cobb and then beat it out of town like you had a fire in the seat of your pants? Look, you got me all wrong. I wouldn't steal a nickel from a guy if I was starving. Sure, I saw it. I took what was coming to me from my stand, and then I left him. Honest, I... Tell haven't... it to the DA. We're going back to New York. What are you keeping me here in this cooler for? I want to see a lawyer. What kind of a frame up are you guys pulling? Let's keep your shirt on, mister. I didn't kill nobody. I'm being framed. You can't find the real killer, so you want to pin the rap on me. I know how you guys work. I want to see a lawyer. Do you hear? Right down. We'll let you see the whole bar association. Oh, hello, Murph. Hello, Larkin. Yeah, here he is. Oh, Murph. Gosh, it's good to see you. Hello, Joe. How are you making out? Murph, Murph, they're, they're, they're trying to railroad Nobody's me. Nobody's trying to frame you, Joe. I had the chief take you off that train. What? There's no murder rap, Joe. Ed Cobb is as alive as you are. Murph, I'll rip these bars and get my hands around that fat neck of now yours. shut up. You got a visitor. I don't want to see nobody. Just get me out of here and I'll... Ruthie. Hello, Joe. So you were in on this, too? Yes, Joe. What do you want of me, anyway? You got my message, didn't you? I got your message. Then why don't you leave me alone? Why don't you? Joe... I spoke to Charlie. He told me about the advice he gave you. He was right, clean through. No, he's wrong, Joe. Listen, you don't want to be with a guy like me anymore. There's no percentage in it, I tell you. You're wasting words, Joe. What do you want to be tagged to me for? Can't you understand? Joe, you're still wasting words. Ruthie, stop talking like a fool. Why don't you get off the charity wagon and take a good look at me? I am looking at you, Joe. And what I see tells me what a fool I'd be if I ever let you go. Ruthie, I... Listen to me, Joe. Don't ask me to leave you, because well, where you go, I go, and where you live, I live. Let your life be my life, and mine yours. Ruthie. I'll let him out now, Ruthie. Thanks, Murph. Come on, Joe. We have a date now at the Paradise Ballroom. This is 
Jeffrey Lynn again. Most people are very much alike in one respect, and that respect is a love of peace, a yearning for freedom from war. To attain this end, many organizations have been set up, and many right-thinking citizens have dedicated themselves to the cause of world peace. But as you know, from your history books, your newspaper, and perhaps from personal experience, none of these great and noble efforts have ever completely succeeded. But there is a solution. A few weeks ago, our own General Matthew Ridgway gave us that solution. He asked that we use the most direct, the most effective method of bringing world peace. General Ridgway urged us to go over the heads of our diplomats, our negotiators, when he so strongly recommended prayer, when he said we should ask God for world peace and world unity. Family theater for the past five years has been asking family prayer for family unity. And we found that this very simple formula works. Then shouldn't it follow? If prayer in the home brings peace in the family, shouldn't prayer in all homes bring peace to the family of nations? Let's take the general's advice. Let's obtain the fifth freedom, freedom from war for ourselves and for our children by the very simple act of asking it of our heavenly father. For just as the family that prays together stays together, so a world at prayer is a world at peace. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Wherever You Go, starring Audrey Totter and Lyle Becker. Jeffrey Lynn was your host. Others in our cast were Norman Field, Ted DeCorsia, Herb Vigran, Kurt Martell, and Baden Powell. The script was written by Jay Bennett, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the Mutual Network, which responds to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your homes and inviting you to join us next week at this time when Family Theater will present Susan Hayward and Sterling Holloway in the story of Danny Dollar Bill. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Thank you.